Shalom, everyone. This week's parasha is Parashat Ketisa. We will be reading the first three verses, the first three pasukim of each aliyah, of each section in which the reading of the Torah for every week is divided. You can find in the laws of prayer in the Mishneh Torah of the Rambam Maimonides in chapter 12 and the third halakha that despite what is universally done around the Jewish world, practically universally, despite the practice of there being only one appointed reader for the entire Torah reading for that week, historically, and the institution as the sages of Israel instituted it in the Talmudic literature, according to Hazal, each person who goes up to say a blessing on any one of the seven aliyot, well, eight if you include the mafliyah, person who says that blessing over that reading is also supposed to be the person who reads that section. And it also states that there should not be two people reading at once. Um, however, it also states that there's a minimum. The person who is reading, who said the blessing for that particular uh, section of the weekly Torah portion, he does not need to read the entire section. It's enough that he reads three pesukim. So that's the basis for the idea of this uh, series that we're creating, where we will be reading, just focusing on the first three verses of each aliyah, of each section of the Torah portion. Once a person is able to achieve that with relative ease, then you can work on reading even more of each aliyah. It's a common problem in the Jewish world that we try to bite off more than we can eat. And it's not cliche to say that less is more very often, more often than not, less is more. And trying to compel the community to do much more than they're ready to handle usually results in the opposite of the result that we intend. So step by step. All right, let us begin. Parashat ki tisa, Aliyah Harishona, the first Aliyah. Exodus chapter 30, verse 11 through verse 13. Why the bear? Why the bear? Adenoi El Mesha Lemur. This is one of the most common, I'm pretty sure the most common, Asuk, the most common verse in the Torah. Why the bear Adenoi? El Mesha Lemur. And we can see in this Pasuk a principle that's important to remember with regard to correct pronunciation of the words. If you have an Aleph in the middle of a word and there is no vowel above or below it, no vowel associated with this Aleph above or below it, then the Aleph is treated as if it's silent. If it's silent, although when there is a vowel associated with an aleph above or below it, the aleph is supposed to make a sound, a sound which has no uh, unique visual representation in most, if not all, European languages. We have the sound of aleph in English, it's called a glottal stop. It's the sound that native English speakers usually make when a word ends with a T. So most native English speakers, when a word ends with a T, we don't usually pronounce the T as a T. We don't say it or he hit. We usually say he hit, hit, or uh, we went, went. We don't say went, we say went. And it's not that we don't pronounce the T. We pronounce it, but we pronounce it as a sound that is not actually a T. We're pronouncing it as a glottal stop. And that's the correct sound of Aleph. But that's only when there's a vowel above or below it. If there is no vowel above or below it, 
you read it as if the Aleph is not there. So instead of Le'emor, if I said Le'emor, that's two syllables, Le'e. And that would require a vowel here, but there is none. So it's read Le'emor, as if the Aleph is not there. Here is Moshe. In a great many publications of Hebrew, if you have the letter Sheen in a word, <clears throat> excuse me, in order to make or indicate that the sheen is a sh sound as opposed to a regular s sound, we put a dot on the right hand side to let you know it's sh and not sa. But because the dot is on the right hand side and the Hebrew vowel that makes an o, an o sound, uh, is also on the top of a letter. You see, for example, here. So if we were to write a word where the vowel O comes immediately before a sheen, you'd have two dots very, very close to each other. So what they do is, if you have a word where there's an O vowel and then the letter sheen, basically the dot on the top right of the letter sheen doubles and fulfills two purposes. It fulfills a double purpose. It fulfills the purpose of indicating the O vowel and also fulfills the purpose of indicating that it's a sheen and not a sin. So no, it's not a typo that you don't see an extra dot here for Moshe, but rather the dot of the sheen is acting as the O vowel and also as the sh indicator. So Moshe, Moshe. Why the bear avenoi el Moshe lemur? <clears throat> he he saw F Rush the Ne Israel. He he saw F Rush the Ne East. Israel. And here you can hear the sound of the Aleph, the glottal stop. You should not say Israel or Israel, but Israel. The Aleph makes a uh, uh sound, an abrupt distinction between the syllables. Israel and not Israel. Israel. Mif, U, the Hem. Leaf u the hem. Leaf u the hem. Leaf u the hem. Anathanu. Anathanu. Ish. Kerfer. Nafsha. Naf. So, la adonoi. Of course, adonoi is not technically the uh, pronunciation of the holiest name of God, yudhe wohe. We're not going to get into the reason for that, but in virtually, well, in all Jewish communities, except perhaps for a small number of terrorites. Even the Samaritans, when they read the holiest name of Hashem, of, of God, in public, uh, we substitute it. Even with Samaritans, it's something that Samaritans and Jews have in common. So it, it points to the very ancient origin, not simply a post-Second Temple tradition. Uh, it's even indicated in the Greek Septuagint, which predates the destruction of the Temple by hundreds of years. However, this four-letter holiest name of God, although we read it as if it says Adonai, which means Lord, the first letter of Adonai is an Aleph, so you might think it should be read La Adonai, but when you read it with a prefix attached to it, such as the Lamed here, attached to the name, 
you do not want to pronounce the Aleph sound. So you're going to say La Dhenoi and not La Adonai. That, that's a common mistake. La Dhenoi. Ifqev, the thumb. Ifqev, the thumb. From the beginning. Ki, thi, sa, eth, rush, bene, is, roel, lif, ku, ve, hem, lif, ku, ve, hem, lif, ku, ve, hem. You can see that. This syllable should be accented as opposed to this syllable. If who they ham. When north and new ish perfect enough sure la the and not la other one. La the noy. If curve the form. Yeah, yeah, you know you accent this one because there's a method. This up and down line lets you know which syllable to accent. Yeah, yeah. Bohem, In addition to trope, this syllable. I'm sorry, the symbol that looks like a a comma of sorts. So that's just one of many different symbols in the text of the Bible that signify cantillation, musical uh, notation of sorts. And it's easy, if you're not so familiar with the text, to confuse it for a type of vowel, but it's not a vowel. The three dots here are a vowel and a eh sound, but this is not. However, it functions not only to indicate what sort of musical notation you may or may not make, but it also indicates, when it's not on the final syllable, it indicates which syllable to accent, which syllable, which syllable's vowel should be slightly elongated, accented, made to stand out. So in that sense, although it serves uh, a musical type function, it also serves a function similar to this up and down line over here, the method. Both can be used or, or are used to indicate which syllable, which part of a word should be accented. Nerf, as opposed to nerf. Nerf. If of a thumb. He, the saw, eth, rush, the ne, is el. If who they ham when north the new ish curve not sure not sure la the noy if of a form well ye yeah for him never if of a thorn. I'll read it one more time. You can pause and then try rereading it as many times as you need until it feels somewhat fluent in your mouth. Heathy saw a thrush bene is roel. If who they ham when all the new ishke fer nafsha la the noy. If curve a thorn. Well, uh, ye ho hem na ref. If curve a thorn. Za yit tenu. Za yit tenu. All are ver. All are ver. Al. Hapakuvin Ma Asleef Ma Asleef, as we mentioned earlier, this up and down symbol called a method, it indicates which syllable to accent. 
<clears throat> it's the opposite of a shawa, the two dots on top of each other here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the method says you accent this one and the two dots on top of each other, what we call a shawa, tells you that either there is no vowel that belongs to the letter under which it appears, in which case you won't see a vowel like you do here. Or it can indicate the two dots here on top of each other, the shawa. It could also indicate that, yes, although there is a vowel here, but the vowel is pronounced in a much shorter way than it normally would be. In other words, unaccented. It's there, but it's unaccented. The opposite of what a method says, which says accent, emphasize. So if these two, hypothetically, were both normal vowels, if this one had no method to say emphasize, and if this one had no shawa to say under emphasize, then you could you might read it mahasit, mahasit, which is how people would normally say it, actually, although it's technically not correct. But because this says elongated, so it's not mahasit, it's mahasit, mahasit, mahasit. Notice this vowel, we're pronouncing it, but it's much shorter than normal. So not ma hasith, not ma hasith, but ma hasith. Very short. Ma hasith. Ashatel. Ashatel. Ma hasith. Ashatel. Ashatel. Akurvash. شاقل <تصفيق> شاقل أقذش عسريم جرا أشاقل عسريم جرا أشاقل ما حصيف أشاقل تروما لا ذنوي Teruma la denoi. Teruma la denoi. Do it one more time. Za yitanu kol ho river al hapakuvim. Ma hasif hashapel. Beshapel hakurdash. As ringero hashapel. Ma hasif hashapel. Teruma la denoi. Includes the three pasukim, the first three verses of the first aliyah of Parashat Ki Tisa. <clears throat> the second aliyah of Parashat Ki Tisa, Exodus chapter 31, verse 18 through verse 20. Wayiten el. Moshe Kechalatha Kechalatha Wayyitan The reason I'm saying Wayyitan instead of Wayyitan is because there's a Dagesh and a, a dot inside of the Yud, the letter Yud here. So the dot at the bottom is the vowel, an E sound. But the dot inside is not a vowel. What it does, it tells you to slightly elongate the consonant sound of this letter, which is Y. So instead of just regularly reading it Y, you're going to say Y, Y. You hold it just a little bit longer. Y, Y, ten. Y, Y, ten. El. Moshe. Kechalatha. Again. Y, Y, ten. El. Moshe. 
כחלף לבבר איתו בהר סיני. לבבר איתו בהר סיני. שני לוחף העבוף. שני לוחף העבוף. Het is often mispronounced as a chaf, the letter chaf. However, the letter het and the letter chaf are clearly distinct letters. This is chaf, this is het. In ancient linguistic works of the Jewish people, these two letters are clearly distinguished as producing two very distinct sounds. The het is grouped with letters like Aleph, He, and Ayin is being produced in the throat, not produced in the mouth. Chaf, on the other hand, is described as being produced in the mouth, necessitating the use of the tongue. It's created by causing slight friction between the back of the tongue and the roof of your mouth. Friction. Het, on the other hand, should have no friction, no contact between your tongue and the roof of your mouth. Rather, it's produced by exhaling. Exhaling while slightly constricting the muscles in the top of your throat, not in your mouth. It's near the mouth, of course, because it's in your head, basically. But it's a little bit further down than where cough is produced. If you use the tip of your tongue, you can slide the tip of your tongue over the roof of your mouth, beginning at your teeth, going all the way back. And you will feel that eventually, when you push the tip of your tongue as far back as you can, you'll notice that the roof of your mouth becomes more soft. Right? That's around the area near your uvula, the little thing that hangs down in the back of your mouth. That's where the friction, the contact is made between the back of your tongue and the roof of your mouth to produce this sound of khaf. You should not make that sound when you make the letter het. There should be no such friction. Your tongue should be relaxed and you just exhale. If you struggle to produce the sound of het, it's better to just pronounce it like an H. If it's at the beginning of a word or in the middle of the word, pronounce het like the letter H in English, like the letter he. Even though that also would be uh, an incorrect pronunciation, but it's much closer to the correct pronunciation of het than chaf is. To the point that the sages of Israel and the Gemara and the, and the Talmud, they do not mention people confusing chaf and het. They mention people, ancient Israelites, confusing het with he. Because it made sense back then. They had not yet been exiled in Europe for thousands of years where the, the sound of het did not exist. So, although the Talmud records people mispronouncing het even 2,000 years ago, but the mispronunciation from 2,000 years ago was much closer to the correct pronunciation. And it could very well be that that's part of the reason why he and het look so similar. Regardless if that's the reason, that's one way that you can use to help remember that he and het produce almost the same sound. With he, your throat is completely relaxed. With het, your throat is your throat muscles are slightly constricted. With chaf, it's not even produced in the throat. It's produced in the back of the mouth with a soft palate of the roof of your mouth making contact with the back of your tongue. So one last time, you can work on pr pr pronouncing het properly, but if you're still struggling, just pronounce it like a regular H sound when you read het at the beginning of a word or in the middle of a word. If you see het at the end of a word and you're not able to pronounce it correctly, then in that case, it's better to pronounce it like the letter chaf if you're a normal English speaker, because most English speakers struggle to make a he sound that's not followed by a vowel. So keep it simple. 
het at the beginning of a, or middle of a word. Pronounce it like a hey if you struggle with pronouncing it correctly. Pronounce it like an h, huh. But if it's at the end of a word, if het's at the end of a word, pronounce it like a chaf until you're able to correctly pronounce it. Shene luhuth o ezuth. O ezuth. Luhuth evan kethuvim. The esba elohim. Wayitan el moshe. Elohim. <laughs> One last time. Wayitan el Moshe Kikal Thur the Ber Ito Bahar Sinai. Shene Luhuth Ho Ezuth. Luhuth Evan Kathufim Kathuvim Baesba Elohim. Verse. Oh, I believe I. When I said the names of the the numbers of the verses, I didn't realize. So eighteen is the last verse of that chapter. So this is Exodus chapter thirty one, verse eighteen, through chapter thirty two, verse two. Next verse. <clears throat> This is a long one. Wayar Oram Wayar Oram Ki Vershesh Mershe. We have two cases, one after another, where you have the Holam, the O vowel in Hebrew. Not being present, but being swallowed up, so to speak, by the dot of the sheen. But it's still there. It's indicated. You're supposed to infer that there's an O vowel here. And it's in both of these words, Veshesh and Moshe. Veshesh, Moshe. La revith min hohor. Wajar oram. Ki vershesh mershe la revith min ahor wayikahel wayikahel aram al aharon aharon we elongate the first syllable of Aharon. Aharon. Wayyu Meru. Wayyu Meru. This O vowel, Holam, it is coming from the Yud. So you're going to not pronounce the Aleph as a glottal stop. You read this as if the Aleph is not there. So that this Mim and this Yud are actually in the same syllable. In English, we would write it Y-O-M. Y-O-M-E-R-U. E-L-O-L. E-L-O-L. Whenever you have a Vav with no vowel at the end of a word, if it's not a typo, it's you should assume that it's a pronoun, third person pronoun, him. And if you see a yud immediately before that unvowelized vav at the end of a word, the yud is silent. 
hello boom i say bonu elohim from the beginning wayar om ki vshesh mesha la rez min o hor wa yqahil o am al aharon wa yamru elo um asse lo nu Elohim. Asher yelchu lefanenu. Asher yelchu lefanenu. Ki ze Moshe. A ish asher elanu ki ze moshe a ish asher elanu me eros misraim me eros Misraim Lo Yadha'nu Lo Yadha'nu Me Aya Lo Asher Yelechu Lefanenu Ki Ze Moshe Haish Asher Helanu Meeros Misraim Lo Yodhanu Me Haya Lo From the beginning Wajar ho om ki vshesh moshe lorezef min ho hor. Wajar ho om ki vshesh moshe lorezef min ho hor. One more time. Wajar ho om ki vshesh moshe lorezef min ho hor. Wajikahel ho om al aharon wajumru elo. Um Aselanu Elohim. Again, Wajikahel Ha'am Al Aharun, Wajumeru Elo, Kum Aselanu Elohim. One more time. Wajikahel Ha'am Al Aharun, Wajumeru Elo, Kum Aselanu Elohim. Asher Yel Hula Fonenu, Kize Moshe Hoish. Asher he elanu me eros misraim. Le yodhanu me hoyo le. Again, asher ye le khu le fonenu. Ki ze moshe ho ish. Asher he elanu me eros misraim. Le yodhanu me hoyo le. One last time. Asher yel khu le fonenu ki ze moshe ho ish. Asher he elanu me eros misraim. Le yodhanu me ho yo le. Let's read the whole pasuk one final time. Wajar ho om ki vshesh moshe lo radhef min ho hor. Wajikha hel ho om al aharun. Wajyum ru elo kum aselanu elohim. Asher yelechu lefonenu ki ze moshe ho ish asher he elanu me eros misraim 
Lo me Next pasuk, a shorter verse. Wajamer, Wajamer, Alehem, Aharon, Parku, Nizme, Azahar, Parku, Nizme, Azahar. Wajamer, Alehem, Aharon, Porku Nizme Azahal Asher Bazne Neshechem Asher Bazne Neshechem Benechem Uvne Fechem Benechem Uvne Fecham Wahavi U Wahavi U Elo Wahavi U Elo Wajamer Alehem Aharon Or Hu Nizme Azahav Asher Ozne Nesheham Benecham Uvne Fecham Havi U Elo. I'm sorry. Havi U Eloy. Havi U Eloy. If you're not familiar with uh, Hebrew grammar, a little mistake like I made there where I said Elo instead of Eloi, it's not just being nitpicky about pronunciation. It actually significantly changes the meaning of the word. Elo would be to him, whereas Eloi is unto me. From the beginning, one final time. Wajamar alehan aharon poraku nizme hazzohov. Asher ba'ozne nishikham b'nechham uvne thikham wahavi'u eloi. One more time. Wajyomar, wajyomar alehem aharon. Orku nizme hazzohov. Asher ba'ozne nishikham b'nechham uvne thikham wahavi'u eloi. Next, Aliyah. <coughs> Third Aliyah of Parashat Ki Tisa, Exodus chapter 33, verse 12 through 14. Wajomer Moshe El Adhunoi. Here the Aleph is silent because this Yud, I'm sorry, because this O vowel belongs to the Yud. Right? Only time you pronounce Aleph as a glottal stop is if there's a vowel directly above or below it. And I know this kind of looks like it's above it, but it it depends on the uh, printing edition of your text to what extent it looks over this Aleph. But just trust me when I say that uh, it's not supposed to be so above the Aleph, but more in between the Yud and the Aleph. And it belongs to the previous letter, because unless it's a guttural letter at the very end of a word, in Hebrew, a vowel always belongs to the letter that comes before it. If it is on the left-hand side of that letter. If it's directly above or below, then it belongs to the letter it's directly above or below. So here, the O vowel, it's supposed to appear as if it's between these two letters, which would mean it belongs to the Yud. So Yo instead of O, uh, right? Which means that this Aleph has no vowel of its own, and therefore it is silent. What Yo mad? You read it as if the Aleph's not there. No glottal stop. What Yo mad? Moshe. 
the dot of the sheen is telling you know telling you to know that there is a O vowel here, Holam. That's why you don't see it, because the dot of the sheen is fulfilling two purposes. If the sheen weren't here, you would see the same kind of O vowel as you see uh, between the Yud and the Alaf of the previous word. And here you can see what a hulam, the O vowel, what a hulam would look like if it belonged to an alif. So you can clearly see the difference. If the hulam, the O vowel, belongs to the alif, it's going to be more directly above it and more toward the left. The hulam always appears, the O vowel always appears on the left side of the letter it belongs to. Omer Elai. Ha'al. Ha'al. You should hear two distinct syllables. Not ha'al. Not ha'al, but ha'al. F om. If you see two vowels in a word, that means there are two distinct syllables. So you should hear it as two distinct syllables. If you see two vowels, but you're only hearing as if it's one vowel, one vowel or one syllable, then there's not enough distinction being made in the pronunciation of the word. So not hal, but ha'al. Ha'al. Eth ha'am. Not ha'am. Or as many speakers of modern Hebrew would read, am, am. That's just like one long vowel, am. It's not am, it's ha'am. Clearly distinct two vowels. Ha'am. What a le the ta me. I'm going to say this word a few times. The ta me. We accent this first syllable and we accent this syllable. Because they have indications that they should be accented. This one has a method which says accent, accent the syllable, which means emphasize the vowel sound here. And this one has a uh, cantillation symbol above it, which says the same thing. In addition to indicating a certain musical melody, it also serves to tell you that this syllable should be accented, which means the vowel is a little bit longer. <laughs> Tani F Asher Tishlah Tishlah As we mentioned in the previous Aliyah Het is pronounced more like the letter H than the letter Chaf So if it's going to be mispronounced it's better to mispronounce it as a H sound as in English help him, her rather than mispronounce it as a ra. However, if it's at the end of a word and you're not able to pronounce it properly yet, as a ha, tishlah, you can hear it, tishlah. If you're not yet able to do that, in this case, it's better to mispronounce it as a chaf than as a regular H, but only when it's at the end of a word or the final letter of a syllable. Because if you mispronounce it as a H when it is the final letter of a syllable, then you're basically going to make it silent because that's what English speakers usually do when H is at the end of a word or syllable, and it should not be silent. So it's better to hear it mispronounced than not hear it at all. Tishlah. Immi. Wa'atta. Amarta. Yadha'tiha. Here we see an indication by the cantillation symbol that ta'am that we should emphasize this syllable. Yadha'tiha. Yadha'tiha. Vishem. Lagham. Masafa. There's no vowel with the aleph, so the aleph is silent. 
مصافة حن And when I say Aleph is silent, I mean it's silent as a consonant, as a glottal stop. But if it's in written form, then the Aleph is at the end of a uh, word or a root word. It's it's in an unvowelized text. It's kind of uh, hinting that there's a vowel there, right? In which case, it would be the Aleph would be symbolizing the presence of this vowel in a case that it's not written. But uh, it's not pronounced as a consonant glottal stop because there's no vowel written above or below it in the vowelized text. I'm sorry. You're always going to make mistakes on occasion, no matter how advanced you are. But if you make a mistake, it's good to read the word a few more times to try to uh, <laughs> rectify, atone for the mistake that you made. And I don't mean by atonement, like trembling that you're going to hell or anything. But what I mean is to rectify, to to correct uh, the mistake in your mind. Because if you've created a pattern for a mistake, then you need to kind of go to the other direction of making it correct to habituate yourself to doing it correctly. So I mispronounced it as Bereno. It should be Berenoi. So I'm going to say that a few more times to get it into my head. It's not Bereno, it's Berenoi. 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 Let's read the Pasuk again from the beginning. Oyomer Moshe El Avenoi Ke Ato Omer. Sorry, Omer, 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 Eli. Oyomer Moshe El Adenoi. Ke Ato Omer Eli. Ha al F O Om Azan. Ha al F. F O M Az Wa Ato L Hatani Wa Ato L Hatani Wa Ato L Hatani F Asher Tishlah Imi F Asher Tishlah Immi Wato Amarto Yedatiho Yedatiho Veshem Wagam Mosotho Hen Berenoi One final time. ويامر مشاء الأذنوي رأي أتو بمير إلاي ها على إث ها عم هزاء وأتو له ذعتاني إث أشر تشلح عمي وأتو أمار تو يذعتيه لشن وغم مصوفه حن بعنوي نكست بس وعطو إم نا مصافي حن بعناخ وعطو إم نا وعطو إم نا مصافي حن بعناخ بعناخ as there's indicators of which syllable to accent. Method. No. Eth. 
Right? The ayin is under accented because there's a shawa, two dots on top of each other. Previous syllable, the the, is accented because there's a ta'am there. Also the last syllable. Cantillation symbol. Lama'an. M so hen. Berenecha. Berenecha. Ur eh. Ur eh. Here the aleph is sounded as a consonant. It's a glottal stop because there's a vowel associated with it. Ur eh. Ki. Ammacha. And so it's ur eh. There's a glottal stop. So the aleph is pronounced ur eh. So it's ur eh and not ure. Ure would mean there's no shva here. If you said ure, as most people do, ure, then you're actually moving the vowel under the aleph and placing it under the resh. That's incorrect. That's not the masora. That's not the tradition of Israel. So not ure. It's ur eh. Ur eh. Ki, ammacha. You know that this is a sound of shva. That is a short vowel because there's a dagesh in the mem. If there's a dagesh in the letter over the shawa, you know it's a sounded shawa. Ammacha, agoy, azze. From the beginning. Wa'ato, im, no, mosafi, hen, be'inecha. Usually, when you see a yud, immediately before a pronoun suffix, then that yud is not going to be pronounced, right? If it were an unvowelized text, you could understand the yud as symbolizing the vowel underneath the previous letter, but it's not pronounced uh, unto itself. <clears throat> and the yud is never pronounced as a Y unless there's a vowel above or below it in a vowelized text. <laughs> No, no, F. Derachacha. Derachacha. Accent the cha. I'm sorry, the cha. Derachacha. Where a the aha. Where a the aha. The man. M. Saw. N. We'll read it one more time. Wa'ato imno mosofi hen be'anacha. Hevi ani no f derofacha. We'll read it one more time. Wa'ato imno mosofi hen be'anacha. Final Pasuk, Pasuk Yudalid, Pasuk 14. Wajyamar, 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 Onai Yelechu, Yelechu. Wa ani hafi wa ani hafi loch wa yamar wa yamar onai yalahu wa ani hafi loch wa yamar wa yamar Wanai yalefu. Wa hani hafi loch. Wajumar. Wanai yalefu. Wa hani hafi loch. One more time. Wajumar. Wanai yalefu. Wa hani hafi. Wa hani hafi loch. Wajumar. Wanai yalefu. Wa hani hafi loch. Wajumar, Wanai Yelehu, 
وهني حوثي لوخ ويمار هنا يلاخو وهني حوثي لوخ ورث عليا Exodus chapter 33, verse 17 through 19. What ye mer avunoi el mushe gum eth adavor aze asher dibarti. I'm sorry, dibarto, dibarto. If you make a mistake, repeat it a few times. Dibarto, asher, dibarto, e -se. Right, this may look confusing, and there are two two guttural letters at the beginning. You do not want to turn them into one syllable. They are two distinct syllables. One, two, two distinct syllables. It's a common problem even for people who are fluent in spoken Hebrew to. Fuse the two into one syllable, one long e, e, se. It's wrong. You need to hear it distinctly in your ear. The, the reader sees the text, but the people who are sitting and listening, they need to hear the distinct syllables. So not e, se, but e, e, not e, se. That's as if to delete one of these two letters. Right? But you need to hear it clearly. E, e. And also, they are opposites. You notice this one has a method, so it's an accented syllable. This one has a schwa, so it's under-accented. So you cannot blend them like e eh, eh, without totally disregarding the niqud, right? Asher, Dibarto, Asher, Dibarto, Asher, Dibarto, He, Mosofa. N. Be'enai. Wa edha'a. Wa edha'a kha. Wa edha'a kha. Okay, so the first syllable is accented because there's a method up and down line. Second syllable, not accented. Wa e, not wa e, but wa e. Third syllable is accented because there's a method. Wa edo, wa edo, wa edo, wa edo. Ah, short ah, because there's a shwa tells you unaccent, underaccented. Wa edo acha, wa edo acha, wa edo acha. B'shem, wa edo acha b'shem, wa edo acha b'shem. Say it as many times as you need to get your mouth used to making these movements. One more time. Wajumar har eni har eni not har eni not har eni. If you say har eni, you're moving the vowel under the aleph 
and placing it under the resh, and that's not what's here. So not harani, but harani. You need to hear the sound of aleph as a glottal stop, because there's a vowel associated with the aleph. Yumar harani no. Eth kvedacho. Yumar harani no. Eth kvedacho. Yumar harani no. Eth kvedacho. Lord, reveal to me, please, your glory, your your renown, the weightiness of your reality. ani Again, an accented syllable with the aleph, glottal stop. Ah, it's long. Followed by a short ayn. Ah. Short because there's the shava, which tells you it's short. So you cannot make these two into one vowel. They're clearly distinct syllables. A avir. Not avir, but a avir. A avir. Have patience. You don't have to say every word in one millisecond. A avir. Not avir. Avir in modern Hebrew means. Error. <laughs> Completely different meaning. And even, even in biblical Hebrew, you can see from Samaritans and from other languages that the a V sound and a W sound do sometimes get conflated. So even in biblical Hebrew, this could potentially sound like air if you miss if you don't slowly, you know, slow down and say the word clearly. Otherwise, you're saying you have God saying, I am air, right? And he said, I am air. That's not right. That's not what it says. A-avir. Not avir. Not avir. But a-avir. 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 Oyyamar ani. Oyyamar ani. A-avir. Kol. Uvi. Al. Onakha. Kol. Qat is distinct from the letter Tav. In modern Hebrew, they pronounce these two letters the same, but they are distinct. With the letter Tav, your tip of your tongue should uh, touch your front upper teeth. With Qat, you need to slightly cup your tongue so that the tip of your tongue is a little bit further back, touching the roof of your mouth, a little bit further back, away from your teeth. Ta, ta, as opposed to ta, ta. Al onecha. Okarafi. Okarafi. Veshem adenoi. Lefonecha. Wahanafi. The nun has a dagesh, so we're gonna hold the consonant sound a little bit. So not not wahanuthi, but han you hold it. Hanna Wahanuthi F Asher Ohun Wahanuthi F Asher Ohun Wari Hamti Ri Hamti F Asher Rahan Ri Hamti F Asher Rahan Rahan. Let's read it one more time. What Yomer Ani A Avir Kol Uvi. Al Onafa Wajamer Ani A Avir Kod Uvi Al Onafa Okarafi Vishen Adenoi Lefonafa 
وقرافي فشم أذنوي بفناخ وحنثي أث أشر أحن وحنثي أث أشر أحن وريح حمدي أث أشر أرحم وريح حمدي أث أشر أرحم وريح حمدي أث أشر أرحم ويل وان فاينل تايم ويامر أني أعذير قلت بي على الفناخ وقرافي فشم أذنوي لفناخ وحنثي أث أشر أحن وريح حمدي أث أشر أرحم That is the end of the fourth aliyah. Next is the fifth aliyah. Fifth aliyah of Parashat Kitisa, Exodus chapter 34, verse 1 through 3. Wajyomer Adhunoi El Musha Saul. لخا صول لخا شنه لحث افونيم شنه لحث افونيم it helps when learning to read the torah in hebrew to break up the verses into phrases you notice certain ta'amim certain cantillation marks that will indicate grammar for you so that you'll know they're the same phrase for example these two you see that you know it's like one unit the two tablets so instead of just focusing on and you can read it kind of like one unit you do want to elongate this because there's a method that tells you to elongate uh, to accent that syllable Shene Luhuth Avonim stones. Shene Luhuth Avonim. Right? This and this point to each other. So this whole thing you can view as like one little phrase. And of course there are larger phrases. Right? But you can break it up into whatever way is more manageable for you learning and getting fluidity of the words in your mouth. Ori Shonim. Ori Shonim. The Aleph is silent because there's no vowel above or below it. So it's not pronounced as a glottal stop. It's as if it's not there. Ori Shonim. Bakhothavti al haluhuth. Bakhothavti al haluhuth. Hold down the Lamid because there's a Dagesh inside of it which tells you to double the consonant sound. You double it as one continuation, not as two separate phonemes. Al Haluhuth F. Hadavorin Asher Hoyu Al Haluhuth Hori Shonim Asher Shibarta. One more time. Hoth of T. Al Haluhuth F. Hadavorin Asher Hoyu Al Haluhuth Hori Shonim said this one wrong, wrong accent. Hori shonim and not hori shonim. It's under the resh, the accent, not under the head. Al haluhuth hori shonim. Hori shonim. Bechoth avti al haluhuth. 
اثهدوارین عشر هایو عل هلوحث پریشونیم عشر شیبارتا We know the accent that's the syllable because it has the method of the thing pointing up and down. Shibarta and not shibarta. Shibarta, shibarta. Wayamer adhinoi al mushar. Sal lakha. Shne luhuf. Avanim. Ori shonim. ويامر أذنوي المشاة الصال لخا شناء لحث أبانيم أري شنيم One more time from the beginning to the end ويامر أذنوي المشاة الصال لخا شناء لحث أبانيم أري شنيم أخاف أبتي على هاللحث أثقد بوريم أشار هايو على هاللحث قريشونيم أشر شبارتا <coughs> وه يا وه يا This is a silent schwa but the he should be pronounced as a consonant without a vowel following it immediately without a vowel immediately following the he consonant sound وه يا so instead of wehaya, it's not wehaya, because that turns this into a sound in Shema. It's not wehaya, it's weh, weh. This is essentially like a mapip in the middle of a word. A mapip is when you have a hey at the end of a word, but there's a dot inside of it to let you know that it's not simply a placeholder for the vowel of the previous letter, because that's what he usually does. Usually when he is at the end of a word in Hebrew, Hey, at the end of a word, usually is simply a placeholder symbolizing the presence of a vowel following the final, the previous letter. In this case, the yud, and the he is here indicating to us, if you're reading it in a unvowelized text, the he would just basically be telling you that there's a vowel that comes after this yud. But when you have a he at the end of a word and there's a dot in it, not the case here, but if you see that, it exists. In that case, you know that the he is not merely a placeholder for the vowel of the previous letter, but rather the he is an actual consonant sound, an H sound. But since it's a guttural letter and it's at the end of a word, it will be an H sound, which is not followed by a vowel. And that is a combination that doesn't exist in many languages, and it does not exist in English. So although we have an H sound in English, we still have trouble making this sound of he not followed by a vowel, because any time we pronounce he in English, exactly as the letter he in Hebrew, but it always is followed by a vowel when we speak in English. <clears throat> so it could be a little challenging to learn how to make an H sound that's not followed by a vowel. Right? So that's the case whether it's at the end of a word or the end of a syllable. Right? So instead of wehe it's not wehe There are not three syllables here. There are only two. So it's weh, weh. You just want to, after you make the vowel sound of the se of the segol here, weh, you just want to give one puff of air. Weh, weh. But make sure when you make that puff of air, weh, make sure that you don't follow it immediately with a vowel. So not weh, not, not weh. Not where <laughs> then you have a he, a, 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 like two vowels. You don't want that. Just one e, and then the blast of air without any other vowel. Imagine that that's the end of the word. Where, where, where. And now imagine that this is a separate word. Yeah. Where, yeah. Where, yeah. And not where, yeah. Not where, but where. Weh yeah. Weh yeah. No khan. Weh yeah, no khan. Weh yeah, no khan. Weh yeah, no khan. Weh yeah, no khan. La beurkab. You should be ready in the morning. Weh yeah, no khan. La beurkab.
و علی ف و بقر ال هار سینای و نیساف تا لی و نیساف تا لی شام عل ش سایلنت آلف because this holam belongs to the rest. If it belonged to the Aleph, it would be on the left side of the Aleph. Rish, Ohor, Weh, Ye, Nochen, La Beqer, Wa Olifa, Wa Beqer, El Har Sinai, Wani Savta Li, Shom, Al Rish Kohor. Read it one more time. Weh ye nochen la beker. Wa ali tha va beker al har sinai. Wani sab tha li shom. Al rish kohor. Rasuk Yemen, the third verse. Ish le ya ale. Ish le ya ale imoch. You want to geminate the mem because there's a dagesh in the mem, so you want to hold down the mem a little longer than normal. Imoch, not imoch, but imoch. Imoch is ungeminated. Without the dagesh in the mem, it'd be imoch, imoch. But with the dot, it's imoch. You hold it a little bit. Imoch. Ish le ya ale imoch. Ram ish al yera. Hol hor. Gam hosen. Wahabokor al yeru. Al yeru. Eru. So the u vowel is preceded by the uh, the constriction of the muscles in your throat while voiced, while vibrating your vocal cords. So this is treated, ayin is treated as a consonant in Hebrew. It makes its own unique sound distinct from the vowel sound associated with it. So not just ir, u, but ir, ru, ru. Before you make the u sound, you constrict the throat muscles and vibrate your vocal cords. Yir, ru, ru. Yiru, Yiru, Al Yiru, El Mul Ohor, Ahu, Ahu, Ish Le Ya Ale Imoch, Ram Ish Al Yero, Bahol. Ahor, gam hasin wa habbukar al yiru al mul ahor ahu. We'll read it one final time. Wa ish la ya ala imach wa gam ish al yira akhul ahor gam hasin wa habbukar al yiru. Al-Mul Hohor Hahu. Next, Aliyah. Aliyah Hashishi. The sixth Aliyah, sixth reading of the Torah portion for Parashat Ki Yisah. Exodus chapter 34, verse 10 through 13. I'm sorry, 10, 10 through 12. This is a long verse. Aruch. When Yomer in on a he, when Yomer in on a he, when Yomer in on a he, Kuref Berith Nerv Paul Amaho Kuref. Berith Nagav Kol Ammaho Ere Sa 
make it three distinct syllables. The people who are not reading the text, who are only hearing you, they should hear three distinct syllables. Not as said. Do not conflate these two letters into one syllable, joining these two vowels as if they're one vowel. They're supposed to be two clearly distinguished vowels. The first vowel is a long eh. The second vowel is a short eh, eh. If you fuse them and just make them one long vowel, that's a completely different vowel. It's a completely different form, not what's here. Eh, I, eh, I. Practice it a few times. This Aleph is pronounced as a glottal stop because there is a vowel that belongs to it, the holam over the top on the left. Belongs to the Aleph, so you know to pronounce it as a glottal stop and not silent. Niflo'eth and not niflo'eth. Not niflo'eth. 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 Wajyamar hinne anuchi kuref berith nagav. Not nivru. If you said nivru, you just delete the aleph and put the vav right next to the resh, and you should remove the shava under the resh. So not nivru. A lot of even fluent modern Hebrew speakers say nivru. It's wrong. That changes the tradition, the the authoritative tradition of the Hebrew language and the people of Israel. Niv re'u. If you have two shavas in a row, the first shava is silent, meaning it's not a short vowel, it's no vowel, the absence of a vowel. Niv, niv, not niv it, but niv. Because it's the first shava of two shavas, one after another, two shavas in a row. So the first shava is a silent shava, no vowel, neve. There is a vowel here, but that's not the shava. The shava is representing the absence of a vowel in this case, neve. And then the second shava, when you have two shavas in a row, the second shava is a sounded shava. So it's a vowel, but it's a short vowel. Re, not re, but re. Neve, re, neve, re, neve, re. And then u. So not nivru, but nivre, nivre u, nivre u, le nivre u, v'chol ha'aras, v'chol ha'goyim, ha'goyim, ha'goyim. There is a vowel associated with the yud, and that tells you this yud is not merely an e vowel, but that the yud is pronounced as a consonant y. Plus the e vowel. Anytime yud appears and there's a vowel that belongs to it, you know that that yud should be pronounced as a y consonant and not merely as an e. Many people mispronounce this as goyim, goyim. It's not goyim, it's goyim, goyim. There's a y there, goyim, a goyim. Where o Where uh, and this is just one many one of many cases where the difference between Aleph and Ayn is important. If you don't pronounce Aleph and Ayn the same, then there's no difference between the word Ra'a uh, he saw and Ra'a uh, she was wicked. Ra'a Khol Ha'am Asher Ata Vakir Three distinct syllables. Ma se ma se and not ma se. Ma se. That's simply wrong. It's indisputably wrong. Ma se. If you want it to be ma se, you erase 
one of these vowels and also erase the ayin. It shouldn't be there. But that's not the case. That's not the tradition of Israel. Adonai ki nero hu. And the problem is not that if someone struggles to make the, the sound, it, no one can do everything. Nobody. The problem is the acceptance of a norm, a uh, indifference. And then not merely an indifference, but an in, an indifference for not correctly reading Hebrew, which has devolved, degenerated into not merely an indifference, but to an intolerance of people who read Hebrew correctly. And then an, a, a delusional imagining that the corruption of the pronunciation of Hebrew is actually correct, is actually the authoritative in the way that it should be read. And it's the opposite. And it makes the Jewish people look foolish to people who come from outside of the Jewish world and are trying to learn the language and they see all these contradictions that are honestly absurd to uh, an objective observer. But that's distinct from someone who knows it should be a certain way, but they're struggling to, they admit that they have difficulty pronouncing it. That's an entirely different thing. There's a difference between someone who is an English native English speaker trying to learn Spanish, and he knows that Spanish is pronounced one way. Uh, but he keeps making his American R or some other very American-sounding accent when he speaks Spanish. He knows it's wrong, but he doesn't go around telling everybody who speaks Spanish that they're pronouncing it wrong and they need to they need to change their proper Spanish pronunciation to an American accent. <laughs> That's an entirely different mentality. Ma se and not my se. Ma se as annoying. He, Nerot, who, Asher, Ani, Rese, Rimoch. Rot, oh, Hol, oh, Om, Asher, Ato, the Kirbe, F, Ma, Ase, Avenoi. He, Nerot, who I share any research from the beginning? What you may hin on a he could have buried never call a maho as a niflo earth. I share learn never over all her auras with all her go yim. Where all her arm I share at top Ethma Asse Adenoi, Ki Nero, who Asher Ani Rese Rimoch. Shamor Shamor Lacho Eth Asher One He One He First syllable accented. On a he. Me sobwaho. Me sobwaho. The dot in the letter vav here, wall, is not a shuruk. It's not an u sound. The way you know that is that there's another vowel associated with it. Okay? A shuruk, when the vav has a dot in it and it's just an u, the dot inside the vav in such a case when vav is only an u will be the only vowel belonging to the vav. But if you see a dot in a vav and some other vowel above or below it, then in that case, the dot in the vav is a regular dagesh, and it's just telling you to double the sound, the consonant sound. So in that case, such as we have here, the dot in the vav is not a vowel, it's just a regular dagesh telling you to emphasize the consonant sound. So instead of instead of masawakha, it's masawakha, masawakha. You hold the W sound a little bit longer. Or in 
modern standardized pro pronunciation, it's telling you instead of Metzavcha, it's Metzavcha, 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 Metzavcha. Hayyam, Hayyam. Again, you have a Dagesh in the Yud, so not just Hayyam, but Hayyam. You hold down the Yud a little bit. Hayyam. Hini, Hini. Koresh, Koresh. Mipanecha, Mipanecha. Eth, Ho Amuri, Ho Amuri, Ho Amuri. Wahakana Ani, Wahakana Ani, Wahakana Ani. No, the Shawa here is sounded. There's a Dagesh in the letter above it. Wahakana ani Waha hiti Waha hiti Waha perizi Waha perizi Waha hiwi Waha hiwi Waha hiwi Dagesh in the Vav, as we mentioned in Masabwaha, this Dagesh in the Vav. Is just telling you to elongate the consonant sound of the wall a little bit. Wahahiwi instead of wahahiwi. Wahaiwusi. Wahaiwusi. Shamar lacha. Es asher onuhi masobwaha hayyam. Hinini gurish mi ponacha. Es ho amuri wahakana ani. Waha hiti, waha perizi, waha hiwi, waha ibusi. One more time. Shamor lacha, eth asher on a hi masobwaha hayyam. In me resh mi ponacha, eth ho amuri, waha kana ani, waha hiti, waha perizi, waha hiwi, waha ibusi. Next pasuk, next verse. Kishomer lecha, kishomer lecha, dagesh in the sheen. Kishomer lecha. I'm accenting it wrong. Kishomer. 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 There's a ta'am under the second syllable. Kishomer. Kishomer lecha. Ishamer lecha ten tichrath berith le yoshev ho aras. Ishamer lecha ten tichrath berith le yoshev ho aras. Asher ato bo alaha ten yih ye. Yeah, yeah, the Mokesh of Pirbaho, the Pirbaho. He shaw me laho, he shaw me laho, Penty Ruth Berith Leyoshev Horas. He shaw me laho, Penty Ruth Berith Leyoshev Horas. Shomer lacha, penti ruth berith le yoshev ho oras. Asher ato bo olaho. Asher ato bo olaho. Asher ato bo olaho. Pen yeh ye le mokesh akir baho. Pen yeh ye le mokesh akir baho. One more time. Ishomer lacha penti chruth berith le yoshev ho oras. Asher atobo olaho. Pen yeh ye le muktesh pakir bacho. Halacha shvi'ith. I'm sorry, not halacha. Aliyah shvi'ith. Seventh aliyah. Of Parashat Kitisa, Exodus chapter 34, verse 27 through 29.
mer adhunoi al mosha khov la kha as advarim illa 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 na vowel under the alif is accented and then the lamid is geminated a little bit challenging Beris. F. Yisrael. Wajjamer adhunoi al mosha. Wajjamer adhunoi al mosha. Kithav lakha. Ithad dvorim ha'il. Kithav lakha. Ithad dvorim ha'il. Kithav lakha. Ithad dvorim ha'il. Ki alpi. Had the borim ho el. Ki alpi. Had the borim ho el. Ki alpi. Had the borim ho el. Prati it ho brief. F is o el. Prati it ho brief. F is o el. Prati it ho brief. وأف إسرائيل ويامر أذنوي المشاة كثوف لخاء أثد فوريم هؤل كي, كي علبي حد فوريم هؤل كراتي تخابريس وأف إسرائيل One more time ويامر أذنوي المشاة كثوف لخاء أثد فوريم هؤل كي علبي حد فوريم هؤل Kurati ittakha barith wa as Israel. Why he? Not why ye he? Why he? Son. Im. Adhunoi. Arba'im. Arba'im. Yum. Why he shom im adhunoi arba'im yum. Wa arba'im layla. Wa arba'im layla. La hem le akhal. La hem le akhal. Umayim le shofa. Umayim le shofa. The yud of mayim is a y sound. You know it's pronounced as a consonant y because there is a vowel associated with the yud. The only time yud is not pronounced like a y in the middle of a word is if there is no vowel associated with it. Umayim, umayim le shofa. Wajjiktav, Wajjiktav, Al Haluhef, Wajjiktav, Al Haluhef, F. Divre Habarif, Aseref Haddevorim, Aseref Haddevorim, the ten. Matters the ten statements, right? It's devarim it, does not mean commandments. A commandment is a devar; it's a type of devar. But a devar is not exclusive to commandments; it can also be statements. So that's where you get the uh, different opinions about how you should um, how you should categorize the different statements of the so-called ten commandments, because it's possible that some of the uh, individual uh, matters 
of the ten are not actually in and of themselves commandments, but it's possible that some of them are statements, right? The fact of the matter is, the Varim does not mean commandments, although it can, a, a commandment can be a, a Devarim, right? Commandments could be, commandments are Devarim, <laughs> but not all Devarim are commandments. All right. F. Divre Abarith. Asareth Haddevorim. Abarith. So not Brith, but Berith. Because there's a Dagesh in the Bet over the Shavah, so we know the Shavah is a sounded Shavah. Abarith. Asareth Haddevorim. Why he Sham Im Adenoi. Arbaim. Yom wa arba'im layla la hem le achal umayim le shofa wa yirte al haluhef eth divre habbarith asareth haddevarim. One more time. Why he shom im adhinoi arba'im yam wa arba'im layla. I made the vowel of the vav a little bit too long. One more time. Why he shom im adhinoi arba'im yam wa arba'im layla. La ham le achal umayim le shofa. Why ye chtav al haluhith eth divre habbarith. Why he breathes Nusha Mehar Sinai Ushne, not Ushne, but Ushne, it's a silent wall. Ushne Luhuth. O Azuth Beyaz Nusha Beriv Te Beriv Te Three syllables Silent Shawa under the Dalit Beriv Te Min Pahor Nusha Le Yoda Ki Oran Ur Pono the better sounded shawa because the bet has a dagesh over the shawa. The better and not the better, not the better, but the better. The better it. Why he bereath Moshe Mehar Sinai Ushne Luhuth O Rezuth Beyad Moshe. Berivte min hohor umusha le yoda le yoda ki koran ur pono bezaber it. One final time. Why he bereath Moshe mehar sinayush ne luhuth. Ho Eduth Beyad Moshe Berivte Min Hohor Moshe Le Yoda Ki Koran Er Pono Bedaber It. That, my dear friends, is the conclusion of this week's parasha. Feel free to slow down the video if you need to hear something more quickly or speed it up if we're going too slowly. If you view this video on YouTube, you have uh, options for the speed of the video. You can find on the little screw, top of a screw or a gear symbol on the, currently I think it's on the bottom right of YouTube videos. Click that and you can adjust speed. Wish everybody a Shavuot Mvaroch, a good and blessed week. Shalom Uvrocha.